Keep that applause going. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's so many of you out here. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a thunderous applause. I'm almost deaf in my right ear. My god. How are we all doing tonight? No, I mean, there's so few of us, I'm literally asking you each individually how you are doing tonight. Starting down here. How are you, sir? Oh, good. That bit's done. OK. <laughs> Welcome to episode th number three of uh, Comedy is Fun Live. That's an ongoing joke that we have at the show here where we pretend we don't know the name. It's, uh, it's a good one. It's a good joke. Uh, this is episode three, uh, so this means that's the third one we've done. In case you're not a math expert. I'm, I got your back. Don't worry. Uh, so... Uh, how this works is we have uh, four local comedians come and uh, do their best four minutes, a minute of it gets cut, three minutes gets aired, and that's it, that's the show. <laughs> and it goes on Shaw. And uh, there's also some interviews at the end, those will be a lot of fun, check those out, stick around for those, don't go anywhere. Because <laughs> we lock the doors, you can't. Uh, round of applause, who's got children in here? Anyone got children? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Felt pretty confident about that one. I was like, this is a definitely a child crowd right here. No, I don't want kids. I think they're awful. But if I, I, I'm too selfish to be a father, honestly, is what it is. Like, I know they say that when you become a parent, you st stop thinking of yourself and only think about them. But I know that's not true because I have parents. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, I, I, I'm too selfish, I think, if I had a kid. Like, let's say I've got a, let's pretend there's a little a young boy, my son here. All right, so young Jeffrey, my son comes up. He's like, Dad, I'm hungry. I want an ice cream sandwich. Oh, good idea, Jeffrey, me too. And I open up the freezer. <gasps> Only one left. <laughs> oh, man. All right, life lesson time, son. If you can reach it, you can have it. <laughs> oh, you can't? I guess it's dad's. <laughs> or uh, that example didn't really land with you guys, so I'll do another one for you. So let's, let's imagine for a second that little baby Jeffrey is in the hospital. <gasps> oh, God, no. Not my fake son who's not real. He's in the hospital, okay? And the doctor comes up. He said, Mr. Crone, we've done all the doctoring, all the science, and we've, we've decided that little baby Jeffrey needs a new kidney. And you're the only match. <sighs> only match, huh? All right, Doc, if you can reach it, you can have it. And then I just start <laughs> running around the hospital like a wild man. It'd be great. That's why, you know, that's why you always have, like, you, you, don't, you don't have one kid, have two. Like, have the first one and have, like, the backup spare parts kit in case the first one breaks down. <laughs> You can use its parts instead of your own. That's what my parents did. I'm the, that's what I am. I'm the second born. My parents are like, nailed it, honey. Woo! <laughs> Let's wait four years, have another one we can uh, compare to this one all the time, and then also harvest for his organs when the time is right. <laughs> Which is why I don't take care of my body at all. Like, sh sure, Michael, you can have my liver, but it's going to look like Morgan Freeman's cheeks when you get it. So <laughs> have fun with that. I don't know, I'm pretty sure I like dogs more than I like humans. Like, if, if I see someone in their car and they're smoking and their dog is in the car with them and, like, the windows are up, I get defensive. Like, hey, what are you doing? You're putting that sweet young pupper's health at risk. <laughs> Cut it out. But then, like, if I see someone smoking in their car with the kid in the car, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> Blow it right in his face. <laughs> and I think I'm justified in, like, I don't know, p people are... I don't, humans are suck. <laughs> like, I, like, have you ever met an exterminator that you've been comfortable around? Like, oh, you like killing small things so much, you decided to make it your career. <laughs> like, you say career, I say collecting skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got a great show for you guys. Uh, your first comedian coming to the stage. Uh, I think by the time this airs, he'll be a Just for Laughs comedian, so we can start saying that about him now. Uh, please get up for the very funny Josh Ashton, everybody. 
right, it's up going in the stuff. Give it up for Andrew, everybody. Uh, all right. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my brother, he was he, he was kind of dumb and he couldn't ride bikes. Like he's, <laughs> he was like seven, couldn't ride a bike. <laughs> I don't know if it's autism or what it was, but he couldn't ride a bike. So instead, because he, he still had to use the training wheels at seven years old, but every time there's like a dip in the road or a pothole, his training wheels would get stuck and they'd just be sitting there spinning just his tire. And he didn't like that, so instead he chose to just run behind us. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just jog, we'd all be on bikes and he'd be jogging behind with his helmet on. Just like, we're like, come on, Drew, hurry up. Maybe Santa will love you next year. Come on, Drew. <laughs> I hear an O. There's four people in the audience. Come on. You're all comedians. No, no owing. <laughs> I was at an intersection the other day, and there was this girl going across on her bike. And I was waiting to turn left. And then she was coming this way across the intersection. And she saw that I was waiting, so she, like, stood up to pedal, like, to, to be a good, courteous person. But instead, her pedal just slipped sideways off her thing. And she just swerved and ate duty into the ground. <laughs> Just wipes out, swerves in the middle of the thing. And I'm waiting there. I'm like, and she's tangled in the thing, and she's panicking, and she's getting more tangled, like quicksand, because she's panicking so hard. And then, like, the light turns yellow, and she's, like, freaking out, and I just ran her over. And <laughs> <laughs> When you don't have an ending, you just kill the person. That's all I <laughs> Your next comedian come to the stage. He's a he's a sweet baby boy, uh, but he's real. This is a real one. Uh, please get up for Alex Simmons, everybody. Hello, all. Wow, you guys are like literally the craziest. <laughs> oh my! I see it in your eyes. You guys are all asking me the same question, and I'm gonna give you guys the answer. Yes. I got my umbilical cord cut recently. <laughs> it was all fun and games, you know. It was pretty good, actually. You know, I didn't have to chew. My mom did that for me. <laughs> didn't have to hold my mom's hand in the parking lot. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> it wasn't all fun and games, though, you know. It wasn't all fun and games, because like, when you're trying to sneak out to a party, it's kind of hard to sneak off when you're connected via the belly button. <laughs> so I used extension cords. I snuck out of my house. But that draws another problem because when I get to the party and there's like a cord going out the door, people are like, what's going on? So they go up to me and they ask, Alec, what is that coming from your belly button? It's, it's an electric Audi. I didn't know. <laughs> I remember when I was a baby, and my mom was, uh, she's breastfeeding me in public, and I was like, Mom, don't you know I'm vegan? <laughs> oh my God, at least give me almond milk or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious if an almond breastfeeded me? I mean, seriously, this is, my, this is my impression of an almond that also happens to breastfeed. Hey! I'm an almond, and I have breasts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Math is right. Math is right most of the time. You know, when you cancel out two things, it makes a negative, or when you cancel two negatives out, it makes a positive, or at least a neutral. I'll give you guys an example. Uh, like, for example, if you're the last man on Earth, but... You're also schizophrenic. Not so bad. <laughs> Got a lot of friends, I don't know. Uh, here's another one, you're having a seizure. You're having a seizure. But there's also an earthquake, so, yeah. Cancels each other out, I guess. Uh, oh, man. Do you guys, like, think that chickens get morning sickness every morning? <laughs> Think of that. Wow. I got one more for you guys. Uh, do you, what, what, what do they say 
when River Phoenix knocks on the door. Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> All right, keep it going for Alex Simmons and his pants, everybody. What a, what a great kid. I just want to tussle his hair. <laughs> Anyways, uh, many great entertainers only go by one name. Cher. I was going to say Bono, but he's not that great. <laughs> Elvis Presley, not a two, that's two names. Seal, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> and your next comedian, Homa. Yeah. Ah, so excited to be here. How's everyone doing? Yeah, probably sick of everyone saying that to you. Um, so yeah, my name is Homa. I'm Persian. If you couldn't tell, don't feel bad. It's okay. I shaved, waxed. <laughs> threaded, tweezed, bleached. Had a lady once approach me. She's like, you're Persian? I heard Persian women are supposed to be really beautiful. I know. She was a better face. It's all good. Uh, it's true, though. Three out of four Persian women are very beautiful. I have three very beautiful sisters. Yeah. So you are good at math. I uh, also got teased a lot as a child. I was short, round, brown, and hairy. And it didn't help that my name was Homa, you know, because it could be turned to anything, like home alone, homophobia, homo erectus, you know. But then I got older, and it became cool things like homey, home slice. Honestly, my mom, as a typical Persian woman, was full of backhanded compliments. She'd always say things like, Oh, good, you wore black. I hear it's slimming. Yeah. I'm single and dating. Yeah. Now, I don't mean going on dates. I mean aging. Yeah. I actually have started to feel more like I'm a 2002 Honda Civic pretending she's a Ferrari, you know? My uh, exterior is a nice skin color, but uh, getting a little rusty. My doors are constantly creaking. Mileage is a little high. It takes a little longer to get my engine running, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. My uh, interior is a little tight, but it's comfortable. <laughs> Ample extras, you know, lots of uh, cup holders. Uh, <laughs> tires are getting flatter by the minute. It's getting a little hard to keep it inflated. Uh, but, you know what? What matters most works just fine, you know? What guys always go and look for, I've been through all the inspections, passed it all. I uh, have also noticed that people look for large uh, trunks. <laughs> so, yeah, very spacious. I guess what I'm saying is it's not about the journey, it's about the destination, and I always make sure my men get to where they need to go. <laughs> I do also have someone very special in my life. Yeah, she's a parrot. Yeah, turns out when parrots are in heat, they regurgitate their food as a love offering. Yeah. Could you imagine if female humans did that? <laughs> Could finally lose so much weight. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. My name's Homa. Keep it going for Homa, everybody. We have one final comedian for you coming up to the stage right now. His name is Angus Craddock, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm guessing it's 11 o'clock is when the shows or whenever, right? I don't know if uh, you guys have ever been to the United States. Speaking of dumb, you've been to the United States before? You, uh, <laughs> have you guys been there? I, I've been there before a couple times, so I feel like I was the only person I know that wasn't surprised when Trump won. Uh, because I know them, and uh, the first day I ever went there, uh, I got unsolicited fashion advice walking out of a breakfast diner from a 400-pound black guy. Yeah, it just walked out of there. The first, he looks, takes one look at me, he just goes, I would change clothes, dude. <laughs> and he was, like, in a conversation, too, so it just, like, right out of nowhere. And, and, he, and he's so big, too, so he's like, I would change clothes, dude. And then, like, he got in sideways through the door, you know, because he's so obese. And it hurt. Fat guy giving fashion advice was half scared that all the homeless people coming up to me were going to be like, "Can I give you an RSP?" Or 
Can I do your taxes? Your T12s? No. It's all right. I, uh, I am a single guy, though, and uh, being single, it uh, do doesn't make it any easier when you have bad taste in women. Um, I don't know about you. I used to be into uh, girls who had lots of like ear piercings. I thought piercings were very telling, you know. I developed like my own kind of like Richter scale uh, for like daddy issues. Uh, <laughs> it was like on the earlobe especially. I was like one on the lobe for every year without like a strong stepfather figure, you know, to guide her through. <laughs> but, uh, whereas I saw the green light. Um, but I was, uh, I, right now I'm more into uh, the cake faces, you know. Uh, I, and I don't like them. It's just they're the easiest to leave on a date, you know, which things go wrong. Um, if you think about it, right, she does something gross or dumb, which is likely like, my New Year's resolution is to not have a resolution at all. It's like, good luck with that. That's, uh, it's impossible. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Shoot for the stars, but oh, my God. That'd be lower than that. Right, if she does something gross, right, like claps at the end of a movie. Oh, God. <laughs> Ugh, makes me gag. Now that's when you uh, you you, this, you give her a compliment, right? You go like, "Oh my God, you're the best reader ever." And then when she tries to go for the kiss, right? When she closes her eyes, as soon as they shut, you just uh, you just blow all that makeup off her face. Just go, <laughs> just big makeup twister everywhere, you know. <laughs> but by the time it settles down, she either you know a think you turn into a frog and try and find you, or uh, you disintegrate it, and uh, that's all. You're the foundation that's sprinkling in the dust. But uh, either way, you'll have uh, enough time to escape and get to the parking lot because, uh, believe me, you do not want to drive that scary face girl home, okay? Uh, <laughs> that's my time. Thank you guys very much. Keep it going for Angus Craddock, everybody. <laughs> all right, I'm here with Alex Simmons of uh, Penticton, British Columbia, Canada, Earth. Uh, that's a pretty good place. Yeah. Uh, Alec, what's your comedy about? Uh, I would call it abstract, like <laughs> Picasso, <laughs> if that makes sense. Doesn't really, but uh, OK. Um, actually, I think I threw the wrong card away <laughs> now that I'm, I did. <laughs> Have you ever been in a fight? Uh, yes, I have. There was this one time I was like, there's this meth addict at the beach and he was attacking us and he hit me over the head with a two by four. So I tried to punch him in the face, but I missed and it was really sad. And he got away. I feel like that didn't actually happen. You think I'm really that witty? <laughs> as soon as you mentioned meth addict, I was like, ah, you're making this up. You've ever been ticked in. Um, your final question is, what do you do for money? Riveting question. I wrote it all these myself. Uh, usually I wait a week till my mo parents give me money. <laughs> oh, right, because you're, you're still on allowance. I am still on allowance. Yeah. It's actually called pocket money. Pocket money. Yeah. I believe that's what they... Don't spend it all in one place, and then they shuffle your hair. Yeah. Trademark. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here with Homa, everybody. Yeah. Homa, what's this all about? <laughs> the meaning of life? No, just as vague as possible. What's this all about? Having a good time. Living life to the fullest. YOLO. I'm sorry. Did you say YOLO? Totally did. All right. Your answer doesn't count. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> your second question. If you could perform anywhere... Where would you perform? Comedy? It, oh. Sure. <laughs> well, gotta be specific. Um, I guess somewhere tropical and nice so that I could go to the beach after. <laughs> I feel like I'm on The View right now. With all the <laughs> oh, oh, good answer. Oh. <laughs> Are you inspired by other comedians or yeah. just through your own life? Oh, combination of both. 
Definitely. You're one of them. Shut up. I, I know. I'm not, I'm not kissing up to the host, but yeah, no, I, there are a few that I look up to for sure. Name their names besides me. Not naming names. Oh, come on. No, no, there's a lot. Everybody, everybody. Uh, I, I look to better myself and uh, not in competition, but to push myself and motivate myself to be a better person and a better comedian every day. Yeah, that answer is boring. <laughs> That's what happens when you're 32. I'm just kidding. Great answer, Homer. That was awesome. Boring. Uh, <laughs> I think, was that two or three? I didn't, I lost that track. Was three. Do another one? Yeah. Do one of the, these ones. No, nope, I already did all those ones. I mixed all these up because I didn't want to do Dave's thing. I didn't I want him to make my own thing. Can you, can you give me an original question? An original Andrew question? Crone an original question. Andrew Crone yeah, question? Let's do this. Um, if you could live in, in any ghetto in the world. <laughs> In, uh, in any time period, so you could, you know, it could be ancient Egypt, it could be, uh, it could be, it could be nowadays. <laughs> which, which ghetto, which, which ghetto would you choose to live in if you could choose? Uh, I would definitely pick. Um, I, I would say Rio. Rio. Janeiro. Oh, yeah, right Savella. beneath Jesus, right underneath Jesus. Well, there. Well, not very religious person. Just I wanted, I wanted, I want to be able to be one of those Spanish people. You, you want to have Jesus looking at you up there the whole time? Hmm. I think we got to. Somebody's got to look out for me. We're here with Angus Credit. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, is it pronounced Credit or Crab Dog? Uh, you know, I don't want to. Don't want to get into. We it. don't have that much time. All right. Quit. Question number one. What is your post-secondary education? Same as you. Uh, I dropped out of post... Uh, sec oh, I dropped mm. out. Oh, mm. oh. I feel like there's more I completed more my high it. school diploma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're post-secondary. So post-high school I have no further education. education. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure you went to school. School, didn't you? Well, you're just like you. You went to Simon Fraser, and then you dropped out of university, right? I never right? went to university. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, God. Well, you're... You are making yeah, stuff up now, now to make uh, me look bad. Anyways, uh, Angus went to comedy school. He just won't admit it. What did you learn at comedy school, Angus, when you went there? Because you went to comedy school. I learned that uh, if I'm hosting a show and I'm wearing a button-up shirt, that I should mess with the buttons and, like, arrange them differently between each and every person, you know, just as a cute, cute little gag, you know? <laughs> I know you're making fun of me, but it played well. So. Oh, you were doing that? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, even you lower. On my info to me and I used this it. third question, we're not going to be friends after this one. Third question. <laughs> ah, this is, I'm scared. Do you think that going to comedy school, because you went to comedy school, yeah. uh, do you think that going to comedy school improved your act? <laughs> or did your parents waste all that money? I don't think they feel like they wasted it because I didn't have to live with them for a year. So, uh. Well, thanks for that riveting interview, <laughs> Angus. Uh, we can use some of that. <laughs> All right, guys. That's our show. That's episode three of Comedy is Fun Live. And they turned off the cameras. <laughs>